Hey everybody, Laura with Audio Control here with a quick overview of the input view on your Audio Control DSP. The information I talk about here will be relevant whether you have a DM series product or a D series amplifier. Starting at the top, you'll see a list of inputs that correspond to the numbered channels printed on the outside of the unit, and clicking the different channels allows you to see and adjust the settings for that input. Below each channel number is a box where you can set a custom name for each channel. So, if you know that the front signal is going to inputs 1 and 2, we can name this channel Front, Full Range, Matthew, or any other name to help you remember what's going into this channel. For my setup, I've got fronts in 1 and 2, rears in 3 and 4, and subs in the mono 5 and 6 channels of my DM810, and I've named my inputs accordingly. Just below that is the input gain panel. You can use this box to type in where you want the input set, or click and hold the slider here to adjust the input gain. If the input gain is turned up too high, the maximize light on the DSP will turn on to let you know that the signal is starting to distort. Be sure to back down the gain to a point before the maximize light turns on to avoid sending a distorted signal through your outputs. We'll go through a more detailed explanations of setting gains in another video. The mute button here mutes the channel so it doesn't pass through to the output. On the first pair of channels, you'll see this virtual milk clip light, which corresponds to the physical light on the DSP itself. In normal use, this light is a dull brown color, and will turn bright yellow if the input source begins to distort. In this case, at around the 32 notch on my head unit, the milk light turns on, indicating that my head unit starts to distort at this volume. To the right of input gain, we have the input delay. This is not the delay we recommend you use when setting things up in your device, but this can be used to remove any delay that might be built into the factory system. A lot of new vehicles are starting to wire some of their factory speakers out of phase with the rest of the speakers in the car. This might sound okay in a stock system, but can make things sound muffled due to the polarity issues when added to your aftermarket system. The 180 degree button allows you to invert the phase of the input without redoing any wiring, bringing the fullest potential back into your stereo. Down at the bottom here, we see the RTA, or Real-Time Analyzer. This panel shows all of the signals coming into the DSP. This can help you know if you're getting a full range or crossed over signal to this channel. The blue bar running across the middle of the RTA references the highlighted number at the top of the RTA here. By default, it's set to 70 dB. If the audio signal is very quiet and you can hardly see the levels, we can zoom in by adjusting down to 50 dB. If the signal is so loud that the levels take up the whole screen, we can adjust the reference and zoom out by going to 80 or 90 dB. F, M, and S here refer to fast, medium, and slow, and those change the speed that the levels fall back down to the bottom. Across the bottom of the page are the frequencies that are being displayed. The frequencies start at 25 Hz, the lowest frequencies, and climb all the way up to 20 kHz, the highest frequency. Thanks for watching. For more information on other settings in the DM Smart DSP app, check out our other videos. And don't forget to subscribe to keep up with the latest information on audio control products.